So welcome everyone uh, from PCAD and f and and happy Martin Luther King Day. Uh, happy Martin Luther King Week, um, because by the time you all see this uh, conversation, it'll be Wednesday. So um, we wanna welcome all of you. Thank you all so much for coming and for being a part of this, for um, hearing us out and being a part of this conversation. This matters to our community. This matters for um, our future as institutions and as communities. And so we wanted to hear from our students, from our peers um, on what the legacy and impact of MLK has been in their lives uh, and in the world that they know. So I'll give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves. My name is Inaya. I am a junior English literature major from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I currently go to Franklin Marshall College and I serve as the co-president of our Black Studies Commission. Thank you, welcome. Um, and I'm Delena. Um, I'm a student at PCAD. Um, I study illustration and um, I'm one of the founders of um, Black, which is the Black-led art collision. Thank you. I am Bright, and I am the Residential Coordinator for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here at Franklin Marshall College. And uh, I will be the one kind of leading this conversation. Um, so uh, without further ado, we will jump into this talk. So the legacy and work of Martin Luther, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, is heavily nuanced and um, a part of the way that we view the conversation around social justice, around activism, around um, progress, around theology and ethics in our, in our world today. And we all have different perspectives about, um, about how that shows up in our lives and how that shows up in the communities that we are part of. Um, we all had different experiences of um, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr whether it was in school, whether it was in our churches, our community organizations, he has been a huge influence on our world and just our time. And so part of this conversation or a big part of this conversation is gonna be about just unpacking that and, and, and learning and understanding about what that really means for us as thinkers, as creatives, as students and members of our communities. So um, I would say like, what made you want to be a part of this conversation today? Um, I would say that um, I think it's important for people to not only learn the history of Martin Luther King Jr., but to also understand that we're living in a time that was a part of his dream, how we're all able to use our voices and fight for the future as well. Um, so I think it's important to understand his legacy, but also implement his dream into our own lives so that way we can continue his fight and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would second that. Um, in addition, I think the time that we're in, we're going through our global pandemic um, and COVID-19 has only exacerbated inequalities seen everywhere. And I felt like I love this platform being a panel because it's very accessible um, compared to like readings or um, like articles about MLK and his legacy. Um, but I do believe that, especially in our political atmosphere right now, the teaching of MLK will go a long way. Thank you. Uh, I think like going into the conversation for me today, I'm, I wanted to take uh, Dr. King very seriously as a, as a thinker and as a human. Um, and so facilitating this conversation is, to, is it means to humanize him. Um, it means to nuance him. It means to kind of pull some of the facade away that has been kind of impressed upon his legacy um, because he was very much people oriented. He was very much about what it means for the community um, to, to be involved in these sort of activistic movements, these, these um, very get serious sort of actions when it comes to um, holding power accountable, holding leadership accountable, holding institutions accountable. And so that was the reason I wanted to, I wanted to facilitate this talk and invite you all to be a part of it. So thank you for those, those responses. Um, so I guess my next question is, what are you hoping people will take away from this conversation? So one of MLK's quotes is, um, life's most persistent urgent question is, what are you doing for others? 
And I hope people take that quote and after this talk are galvanized into action to go serve their community and do what's right for everybody. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's important for people to take away that um, we all have the ability to use our own voices to uplift others and to educate others. Um, and the best way to start is within your own communities. Yeah, um, actually, one of the things that's really cool about that and that really sticks out to me with the service toward others being so important, um, there was a speech that he gave, I think it was in 1968, but I'm pretty sure that's when it was. But he says, he, he's talking about the parable of the Samaritan. Everyone knows the parable of the Samaritan. If you don't look it up, it's free. Um, but what he says about that is when you think of um, these people that are vulnerable that you would be fighting for, or even your community that you're fighting for, it's not so much thinking of like what may happen to you because there's a risk that you take when you get involved in these sort of conflicts, but, or in these sort of um, movements, but you think more about what will happen if you don't. What does the future look like if you are complicit or complacent with the injustice that you're witnessing? Um, and yes, like, I mean, people will, you will have your job threatened sometimes. You will have mm -hmm. people that have had their homes and their churches threatened and, and things like that for standing up for you. Like imagine like people being threatened for registering to vote or trying to be admitted to one school or the other. You think like, what happens if no one takes that chance of no one um, is bold enough to try that or to, to, to push the system? Um, so I appreciate that, like keeping that at the center, what can you do for someone else? And really considering like what will happen if you don't, that's not to pressure a person, but to think very seriously about what you're capable of and how you're able to be of service. No, most definitely. I think also, I think the key thing about that and taking a stance is that you're doing it for other people. Um, and I'm just thinking of like the riots that happened at our Capitol that um, like just a week ago. Um, and it was like, it was very selfish acts I wouldn't say it was in um, spirit of serving for everybody, but definitely, definitely, definitely taking a stance for other people is the main emphasis of that speech. Yeah, yeah using any platforms that you have, because um, we have access to social media um, and just, you know, informing your family members, your friends, that can spread throughout um, a whole bunch of people. So even just making a post like, hey, I just discovered something. I think everyone should know about it and spreading that around. Uh, it's interesting that you bring up what happened to the Capitol last week because that wasn't that wasn't a nonviolent protest. Yeah. That wasn't a passive protest. That wasn't um, that wasn't a sit-in. It wasn't needed. It was it wasn't necessary <laughs> either. Like it's, um, so it's 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 ironic, I guess, to me that we would be having this conversation a week after those events took place and, 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 it be, and those events be so antithetical to uh, Dr. King's vision and uh, hope for America and the world. I, I, it's not lost on me. Um, do you guys wanna to move to the next question? Yeah. Okay, um, so what are some words that come to your mind when you think of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? So I think of, in light of everything happened, even the summer protests of um, 2020, I think of peace when it comes to Dr. Robin Martin Luther King. Um, with peace, we don't know if we're gonna ever see it in our lifetime. As long as there are oppressive forces against minoritized communities, there will never be peace. But I think it's something that is worth striving for. I think it's something getting up every day and having that a part of your mission of like, what can I do for other people to bring global peace? Um, and so I feel like just that word is like, it's even if it's nonviolent, um, even if it is violent, I think it's all in pursuit of peace. Yeah, um, I think of hope. I think, you know, while he was act, like an activist and advocating for what he believed in, um, he always hoped for the future and for future generations. Um, and he passed on that hope to all of us. Um, we're here now and we're still uh, having his um, conversations and getting his message out there. So I think um, hope is really what comes to mind and it's really what we strive for in the future. Thank you. 
Um, do you see that being, well, I guess I'll, I ask a follow-up question in terms of hope, what do you see being a barrier to that hope? What's something that's challenging that hope? I think, especially like in today's climate, we have, um, we've had protests that were for equality and for um, justice. And then we have what happened last week, which really went against, um, at like, we all voted and the, what we saw last week went against what most people were voting for. So I think acts like that, um, a, like a majority of people or a group of people that um, don't want to compromise or listen to other sides, um, that can be, um, that can hinder um, some of our hope. But I think um, it won't, it's not enough to like break anyone's spirits or anything. I will also add, um, I think capitalism is a huge barrier to achieving hope and peace. Um, the fact that people are gaining money out of people being in prison, the fact that people are gaining money from schools not having enough resources or failing test scores, the fact that people are gaining money from having poor people on the streets, I think it's very hard to see a hopeful place, like a hopeful America in the future. So we're going to get some massive, massive system. Um, but I don't think that should like stifle our voice. Yeah, definitely yeah. the way that the system is created, um, it's not meant for people that weren't, I guess, originally written into the constitution. So we have to constantly fight um, to have our voices heard and just to have like the same level of rights that everyone else has. So. Uh, do you think that Do you see the work of MLK being meaning to change the system or to break it? Like, what do you, what was, the, what do you feel like um, is his call toward an unjust system? A good question, right? <laughs> I think it probably starts with um, communication. Um, we have to, well, it might be more than two sides, but um, we have different sides that have varying opinions. Um, and then we have some people that are in positions of power that aren't compromising with our vision. Um, and I think um, the, um, Dr. King would have wanted us to compromise or at least like, you know, start a conversation with each other. Cause I think that's really been a barrier in recent generations. Yeah. yeah I was being able to communicate with each other. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I will add on to that. And I definitely believe that Dr. Martin Luther King believes in progress in our existing system. I think America has a lot of potential um, and we also have a lot of growth to do. So I wouldn't say he desired like a complete revolution, um, but definitely he saw progress to be made and to go about it. Many different people had different opinions on it, um, but I believe he really wanted to see progress um, and he saw potential. Um, so my next question would be, how does the legacy teachings and service of uh, Dr. King encourage or influence you as a student and as a thinker? So I think because Dr. Martin Luther King was not revolutionary and he still was killed for his beliefs show that there's no right or wrong way to be an activist. And especially when you're a black, especially when you're a black woman on a PWI campus. Um, but I would say like for that reason, like the reason he was killed, like, our existence itself is revolutionary. Our existence itself is resistance, just being in these institutions that weren't created or designed for us, but rather around us. And so I think I acknowledge the, the position that I have on this campus. I acknowledge the potential uh, that is on this campus and I acknowledge the work that needs to be done. 
Um, and so in an essence, like that's what I came here to do, but it's also protecting myself as a black woman, my mental, um, and just like my, my stress levels to not let the school stress me out, but still work and to amplify the voices of the marginalized on this campus. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I go to a school that's super small. We only have about like less than 300 students. Um, so I've used that um, to help create opportunities for um, other minority students like Starting Black and um, hosting an art exhibit that's meant to amplify the voices of um, Black students. Um, and yeah, I think that's really important. And that's really what I take away from Dr. King, um, being able to use the opportunities that I have in order to uplift those around me. Anything else you want to add? Um, so the next question is a little bit similar. It's similar to the first question, but it's a little bit different um, because I think that understanding of his legacy teaching, you know, influencing you as a student as a thing, those are personal, but we're like looking at like in terms of how you serve others um, or even your own goals and aspirations in life, like what you actually want to do with your careers and your education. Um, how does, MLK inspired you that way as an activist, as an organizer, um, you being an artist and you being like a literary scholar. That is crazy that the two of, that's like what you guys is not. Um, I love that. Um, Cause black girls rock, but it's like perfect period. So, um, but like, how does that, how does that motivate you to pursue your own, your own passions and careers? I would say, um, looking back on the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, he wasn't always successful. I remember reading there was um, a march he did, and to fool the journalists and the news people, he would have the same people march around and around and around um, to get a perception that there were more people out there supporting his mission. Um, but ultimately, I think as a leader, he was able to um, encourage other leaders to take stand up and take a stand, um, while also convincing other people to believe in his mission and his word and his purpose in life. And so um, I think as a student as a student and as an organizer, as an activist, as a leader, as a literary scholar, as a black woman, um, I know that there aren't gonna be, it's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be butterflies and roses, um, but it's the, the ambition within me, it's my purpose, it's my desire to see greater, um, to just keep going. Like, even if there aren't as many people that believe in my mission, I know there are some, and I know that we can work together to create great change. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, following your passions and like seeing your visions to the end is um, really important. Um, so especially like now, like with social media, there's so many things that you can see, so many like negative things that you can see. Um, so rather than letting that kind of like stop me and like what I want to do, I um, use that to fuel my passions. Um, as an artist, you know, people constantly say things about artists and um, yeah, I just try to just keep pushing it. <laughs> we have other things to do, so. Um, I guess a follow-up to that would be like, do you seem you like you employing this sort of thinking in your pursuit of your dreams, your aspirations, or even your hopes for how you'll be able to create change? Um, what are some barriers you see to that? And right, like I mean, if you think of yourself employing the rhetoric of Dr. King or the following in the example of him, like you said, I think I think that the the example that you give about him just not always being successful is fantastic. Like, I think that's something that we forget a lot of times too, is that there were times where he, there were towns he was run out of. Um, and there were, he suffered violence a number of times and, um, but he was perseverant and he um, was faithful in his work. And so I think like, not the, Anyway, maybe I don't even need to go on that. Not that anybody's gonna try to chase your car down, but like, how do you live with that? That's the reality for you, like for, for us. Like that could just happen. Um, they still burn churches in the South. Like no one is like off the hook with this. So I guess like, how do you take care of that in yourself? Like what makes you wanna keep thriving or, or pushing knowing that those are the realities?
I think um, knowing that I still have a community to come back to, um, a community to talk to about anything, um, how, how we all understand each other, even though we all come from different walks of life. Um, that really, you know, keeps me grounded. Um, yeah. I think for me, it's my personal cabinet. Um, I have people in my life that serve a purpose to help me achieve my goals. And I know like whenever I run into an obstacle, they're there for me to talk through my frustrations and to like, let's plan what we're gonna do next. Um, I'm personally interested in education and there's a lot, a lot of systematic um, failures for um, K through 12 students. And I can't save everybody. Like I can't do everything that I want to do, but I know that it's worth just pushing towards and connecting with the right people to help me push towards as well. Thank you for that. I think that like, that's also very important knowing that there are people, I'm, not that we're anybody's savior, but like you have a community that's really counting on you making it, that's counting on you actualizing on your dreams. There's a lot of people that are cheering you on and want to see you do well. Um, and, and the progress that you make as an individual is shared. Um, we are part of communities, our, you know, our mothers, fathers, aunties, uncles, grandma, like it doesn't matter. There's people that are like behind you, even if it's just your classmates here at school, your professors, we want you to do well. Um, and so like really employing that example of like, of just perseverance, knowing that like, not every time you get out there is gonna be the time that you win the award or the time that you um, make it in the paper or anything like that, but like, or it may, may not be that pretty, um, but, but to not be afraid, um, to know that your try is still worth it. Uh, I think it's really important. I think that's really what a, a really good example that he, that Dr. King makes for us. Um, is there anything else you wanna add? like a closing statement or something? Uh, um, even though like take the time to, you know, reach out to your community and try to um, educate people, but also take time for yourself. And I, I think that's the most important thing. Always make sure that your mental health comes first. Um, so that way you can keep going and spread your mes message across, I guess. <laughs> yes. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely agree with take care of yourself first. Um, and to my Black students, my Black peers out there, remember that you are revolutionary. You are an activist by just doing your homework, by just going to class, by just getting that uh, dean's list. Like, take care of yourself, but also make sure you have a purpose. Make sure you wake up with intention um, and make sure you know what you're here on this campus to do. So. Thank you. I think one thing I would close with, um, a, a, a core part of Dr. King's message was a very much shared destiny, that we as a people, as a nation, share a destiny that like, the American dream is never realized if it's not realized in the most marginalized or the most vulnerable people in the country. Um, and so one of the ways he lines that out is that racial injustice is, is, a, is um, a black man's burden, but it is a white man's shame. Mm -hmm. And to think that like when we are, from wherever we are, when we are living in that system, it affects all of us. It is, it is a disease that we are all sick with of racism. Mm -hmm. And though it, it requires us to do all, all of us to do the work of introspection um, to try to reverse and change that within ourselves so that we can see that difference in the world. Um, so that would be my closing statement. Remember that you share destiny with the people that you're in community with. And so you're not just fighting for yourself, but for everyone around you, even the people that don't think that they're on your side. Right. Um, because progress is shared. Real progress is shared.